Christ's grace is sufficient to transform us. Christ's arrangement with us is similar to a mom providing music lessons for her child. Mom pays the piano teacher. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yep, look at all those hands. Because mom pays the debt in full, she can turn to her child and ask for something. What is it? Everybody in a big voice. Oh, you knew that answer. Practice, practice. Now, does the child's practice pay the piano teacher? No. Well, does the child's practice repay mom for paying the piano teacher? No. Practicing is how the child shows appreciation for mom's incredible gift. It is how he takes advantage of the amazing opportunity mom is giving him to live his life at a higher level. Mom's joy is not found in getting repaid, but in seeing her gift used, seeing her child improve. And so she continues to call for practice, practice, practice. Now, if the child sees mom's requirement of practice as being too overbearing, gosh, mom, why do I need to practice? None of the other kids need, none of them practice. And I'm just going to be a professional baseball player anyway. <laughs> Maybe it's just because that child doesn't yet see with mom's eyes. He doesn't see how much better his life could be if he would choose to live it on a higher plane. Now, in the same way, because Jesus has paid justice, he can now turn to us and say, follow me, keep my commandments. If we see his requirements as being way too much to ask, gosh, none of the other Christians have to pay tithing. Gosh. None of the other Christians have to go on missions. They don't have to do temple work. They don't have to serve in callings. See, maybe we don't yet see through Christ's eyes. Maybe we have not yet comprehended what he is trying to make of us. Put simply, if Jesus did not require practice, then we would never become pianists. Christ's grace is sufficient to help us in that process. Brother Wilcox, I mean, don't you realize how hard practice is? I mean, I'm just not very good at the piano. I hit a lot of wrong notes, and it takes me forever to get it right. Now wait, isn't that all part of the learning process? When a young pianist hits a wrong note, we don't say he is not worthy to keep practicing. We don't say that. We don't expect him to be flawless. We just expect him to keep trying. Perfection may be his ultimate goal, but for now, we can be content with progress in the right direction. Why is this perspective so easy to see in the context of learning piano? but so hard to see in the context of learning heaven. Too many are giving up on the church because they are tired of constantly feeling like they are falling short. Oh, they've tried in the past, but always feel like they are just not good enough. They don't understand grace. There are young women who know they are daughters of a heavenly father who loves them, and they love him, then they graduate from high school. <laughs> and the values that they memorized are put to the test. They slip up. They let things go just a little too far, and suddenly they think it's all over. These young women don't understand grace. There are young men who grow up their whole lives singing, I hope they call me on a mission. And then they actually do grow a foot or two. <laughs> then suddenly these young men find out 
how easy it is to not be trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, or reverent. <laughs> they mess up. So they say, I'll never do it again. And then they do it. And then they say, this is stupid. I will never do it again. And then they do it. The guilt is almost unbearable. Oh, they don't dare talk to a bishop. Instead, they hide. And they say, I can't do this Mormon thing. I've tried. And the expectations are just way too high. So they quit. These young men don't understand grace. I know returned missionaries who come home and slip back into bad habits they thought were over. They say, oh, I've blown it. I mean, there's no use in even trying anymore. Seriously? I mean, these young people have spent entire missions teaching people about the atonement of Jesus Christ. And now they feel like there is no hope for them. Those returned missionaries don't understand grace. In all of these cases, there should never be just two options, perfection or giving up. When learning the piano, are the only options performing at Carnegie Hall or quitting? <laughs> no. Growth and development take time. Learning takes time. When we understand grace, we understand that God is long-suffering that change is a process, and repentance is a pattern in our lives. When we understand grace, we understand that the blessings of Christ's atonement are continuous, and his strength is perfect in our weakness. When we understand grace, we can, as it says in the Doctrine and Covenants, continue in patience until we are perfected. One young man wrote me the following email. I know God has all power, and I know he will help me if I'm worthy. But I'm just never worthy enough to ask for his help. I want Christ's grace, but I always find myself stuck in the same self-defeating and impossible position. No work, no grace. I wrote him back and testified with all my heart that Christ is not waiting at the finish line once we have done all we can do. He is with us every step of the way. Elder Bruce C. Hafen has written, the Savior's gift of grace to us is not necessarily limited in time to after all we can do. We may receive his grace before during and after the time when we expend our own efforts. So grace is not a booster engine that kicks in once our fuel supply is exhausted. Rather, it is our constant energy source. It is not the light at the end of the tunnel, but the light that moves us through the tunnel. Grace is not achieved somewhere down the road. It is received right here and right now. As dark as night may become, we can always count on the sun coming up. As dark as our trials, sins, and mistakes may appear, we can always have confidence in the grace of Jesus Christ. Do we earn a sunrise? No. Do we have to be worthy of a chance to begin again? No. We just have to accept these blessings and take advantage of them. In conclusion, I reiterate that the grace of Christ is sufficient, sufficient to cover our debt, sufficient to transform us, and sufficient 
to help us as long as that transformation process takes. The Book of Mormon teaches us to rely solely on the merits, mercy, and grace of the Holy Messiah. As we do, we do not discover, as some Christians believe, that Christ requires nothing of us. Rather, we discover the reason he requires so much and the strength to do all he asks. Grace is not the absence of God's high expectations. Grace is the presence of God's power. Oh, young people. Don't quit. You keep trying. Don't look for excuses and escapes. Look for the Lord and his perfect strength. Don't search for someone to blame. Search for someone to help you. Seek Christ. And as you do, I promise you will feel the enabling power we call his amazing grace. <laughs>